What GPU should you buy in 2023? Now, for this video, I am going to make two assumptions. The first is that you will be buying an NVIDIA GPU. The reason for this is just their dominance in terms of support by the major machine learning libraries. The second is just their proliferation across the major cloud platforms. The next assumption that I'm making is that this GPU is going into a machine that you are building or installing. Basically, is the GPU power in the same room as you? If we're talking servers, then that's a completely different proposition. Now, in this video, we're gonna talk about things that are my opinions for what I like to use in deep learning and machine learning. You may have different opinions, and the discussion on these videos, I learn a tremendous amount. So please let me know in the comments what you think of anything that I say here. And if this is helpful to you, please give me a like, maybe subscribe to the channel, certainly helps a lot. All right, let's get into it. The first thing that you need to think about is since we've eliminated the server line, do you want to go for the NVIDIA RTX or the NVIDIA GeForce line? The NVIDIA RTX is more expensive. This is the professional line of GPUs. This was called Quadro in days gone by. And there's still, I believe, one Quadro that's in the active lineup here. If you're going to get this more expensive line of GPU, I can really think of only two cases that you would want to consider it over the GeForce, which is really more the focus of this video. If you'd like me to do a video entirely on NVIDIA RTX, uh, let me know in the comments. I would be glad to look at that. I have an NVIDIA RTX A6000 in that machine and really, really like it. The two reasons that you might want to consider the professional line, in my opinion, one is you need a lot of RAM on your individual GPU, and secondly, that you're going to perhaps get more than one of them. So let's look at those one by one. The RAM, you can get on the NVIDIA A6000, which is the Ampere version, or the NVIDIA A6000 ADA edition, which is not yet out as of the recording of this, but will be coming soon. Those both come in 48 gigabytes of RAM. The best you can do on GeForce is half that. So if you want that much RAM on a GPU and have that flexibility, it's, it's worth getting. And that's kind of the category that I fall into for having the A6000. The second thing to consider is do you want two of them? is just their compactness and their ability to stack several of them together. The A6000 that I have in that machine just takes two slots. So if you're gonna put two of them together, that's four. Whereas if you're putting two 3090 or the, the 40 equivalent, you're, you're gonna be taking six because it's, it's three by three. So they're really designed to be denser and that's what you start to get when you go to the professional series and then like hopper the server class. So let's jump right into GeForce. We'll make use of this chart a lot in this video. Here I have the Ampere 30 series at the top, this is the older one, and the newer Ada Lovelace 40 series. We are really at a turning point, like we usually are, between two technologies. You have the 30 series, which is Ampere, now being replaced by the 40 series, which is ADA. We're at a point where both of these are worth considering depending on price point. If you just want maximum, maximum performance and you don't care about price point, by all means get a 4090 or get an A6000 and maybe wait for the ADA edition to come out of it. That's, that's your best bet. But if you're trying to hit a specific price point, you're like, yeah, I can spend this amount of money on a GPU, then let's look at really what is going to get you the best GPU for that dollar amount. I'm not gonna talk about the dollar amounts of the actual GPUs because if I do that, this video is obsolete before I even upload it. Because there's a lot of factors. If you're just looking at the MSRPs, You'll make a decision and then you'll go on Amazon, you'll go on Newegg, wherever, and you'll be disappointed because they're gonna cost more, they're going to not be available. So you've gotta look at current market conditions and what, 
what is going on there with su supply and demand. So you see a lot of things going on on this chart. You have the NVIDIA CUDA cores. That is really going to determine how fast the GPU is going to do the deep learning. The clock cycle is important as well, but fundamentally it's going to be how many CUDA cores you have. Memory size is important. That's the amount of stuff that you can have loaded, data, the parameters of your neural network into the GPU as it's running. And then notice the memory type. The memory type shows how fast your RAM on your GPU is going to be. The 30 series, you'll see that there's two classes. The GDDR6 is slower than the GDDR6X. In the 40 series, there's just one type of RAM, at least for now. So failing everything else, what I really go for on a GPU is memory for deep learning. So looking at this chart on the memory size, I would say 12 gigabytes is really sort of the sweet spot where a lot of things are going to work really nice for you. If you drop into this eight gigabyte range, which really only exists on the 30 series, it's good to maybe get started with, but you're gonna quickly run into some limitations. I used a 3060 Ti, even did a video on it. It was very, very challenging for me to get stuff, even beginner-ish stuff working in that eight gigabytes. The RTX 3060 with the 12 gigabytes, that's a really interesting card to me. I never found one of these actually in the wild. I wanted to experiment with it. If you can find it and you can get it at a great price, I would recommend taking a look at that particular card. Now moving into the 40 series, everything is above that 12 gigabyte sweet spot. So like a 4070 versus a 4080, if the 4070 Ti, which is a very new one, and is getting some flack currently on its price point, but if you can find one at a rate that the price point makes sense, then might, might certainly be worth looking at. NVIDIA has reported that the 4090 and the 4080 both speed-wise beat anything in the 30 series. So going strictly on memory, I would look at a 3060 RTX with the 12 gig. If I can find one and the price point is there, that it's really a good deal. If, if that's all you have in the budget, then I would move up and look at maybe a 3080 or above on the 30 series and think about how much of that RAM you can really get into there. I would buy the most RAM really I could because that's going to future-proof you the best. But then look at the price point. If the 4080 or the 4090 is getting closer that you, that you can justify it, then you can get some additional processing speed and it can get done quicker. Again, all my opinions, let me know in the comments what do you think. Believe me, I learn as much from you as you do from me. Okay, once you get that, that GPU, what is the next thing you do? Well, you subscribe to my channel so that you are up to date on all of the latest technologies that you might want to use with your GPU, because that's what I focus on, is machine learning programming and often GPUs come into that mix. Thank you for watching this video and please give me a like and subscribe if this was helpful. It helps a lot. Thank you very much. And have a wonderful 2023.